and intentionally infecting Americans. That's our top story tonight. Growing outrage after Texas police officials reveal that Joe Biden has been colluding with, well, Catholic charities and others, these other NGOs, to place illegal aliens infected with the China virus into American cities without notifying our people of the threat to public health. Take a listen. The hotel in totality is, uh, has already been rented out and everybody that lives there or is staying there temporarily has these forms to be there. And from there, they're allowed to move to their destination, wherever that destination may be at. And nobody's watching them and they can pop into restaurants where you and your family might ha happen to be grabbing a burger. Uh, joining me now to weigh in, Pennsylvania Congressman Guy Reschenthaler. Congressman, always wonderful to see you. The Biden White Thanks, House Chris. is putting illegal aliens in what taxpayer funded hotels while they're knowingly infected with the China virus. And they're doing this all in secret, Congressman. Now, in my view, this is impeachable. It's illegal for our own government to endanger the lives of our own citizens. What legal actions can the Republican Party take? Well, let's just focus on, on impeachment. The Democrats have reduced the bar for impeachment to such a level that now it's a political exercise. They impeached President Trump twice. Uh, every time they talked about their legal justification, it got narrower and narrower and narrower, narrow as the evidence showed that President Trump had done nothing wrong. I don't want to relitigate this, but now it's a political exercise. So now it's a political calculation. It's not a legal calculation, but the main point is how badly Biden is mishandling the southern border and endangering us. You know, I'm at the Capitol. I'm right off, uh, right, right, right outside the, uh, uh, right outside the well. I could get arrested because I'm not wearing a mask. That's how ridiculous it's become, Chris. So we need to make sure that we retake the House in 2022, put an end to this madness, retake that the White House in 2024. That's how we stop uh, this mismanagement at the southern border. Okay, so what I'm hearing from you is that, that Mr. Biden could be impeached because he has knowingly put Americans at risk uh, in red states, I might add. But let me press you on the, the legality of this. And maybe if you don't know, I know you're not a lawyer, so maybe, maybe somebody on your staff or maybe some other Republicans who do know the law. Because what would happen if, let's say, Biden decided he wanted to bring in a batch of illegal aliens who had smallpox? Or well, maybe I, he wanted to bring Chris in a batch I, of, if he wanted to bring in a batch of illegal aliens with measles and just put them in the middle of, let's say, in, in your district, in the middle of your district, and allow them to walk around exposing your constituents to measles or smallpox, or in this case, the China virus. Do, do you think that, that that's legal, sir? Do, does that pass the smell test of legality with you, sir? Is our government able to do that to us as citizens? Well, no, Chris, I actually am a lawyer. I was a prosecutor in the Navy. I was a defense attorney. I was a district judge. Uh, but the reason uh, I was talking about the political calculation is because the standard is so low now uh, from what the Democrats have done. That's really a political calculation. But going back to the border, it's absolutely unacceptable that these illegal immigrants are being uh, being allowed to come come here without getting uh, without getting the vaccine while we're being we're forcing federal employees to take the vaccine. Also, if President Trump had done this. Uh, the media would have been all over it. Very few people are covering the true chaos and the, the humanitarian crisis that's going on at the southern border. So absolutely, this is a mismanagement. And then moving illegal immigrants that have COVID-19 into the interior of the country, of course, that's a bad idea. It's spreading the, it's spreading the virus. Uh, <clears throat> and, and so, yes, he needs to be held accountable. We can do that at the ballot box in 2022 with the House and Senate, and then obviously at the White House in 2024. All right. I, I, I want to move on to something else, but just, just very quickly. So from what I'm hearing from you, it's not illegal for our government to intentionally sicken our citizens. It's, that's not illegal. They can do, they can infect us with any disease they want to and not be prosecuted. Is that what I'm hearing? That, no, Chris, that's not what I'm saying. But there, it's incredibly hard to file suit against elected officials because of sovereign immunity. You can talk about stripping that, but it's incredibly difficult. The quickest solution that we have right now is to retake the House and Senate in 2022. That would put an end to this madness. And of course, but Republican, our quickest solution here is a political solution. That's what I'm saying. 
Understood, understood. Uh, now let's turn to Texas Governor Greg Abbott. He's banning the ground transportation of infected illegal aliens being placed into his communities. The uh, Catholic charity is already raising a stink about this. They want the ability, of course, to transport uh, uh, infected illegal aliens into our neighborhoods. It seems only certain Republicans, though, care about the health and safety of their own voters. Do you know of any Democrat besides Henry Cuellar who will stand against Biden's efforts to secretly infect American cities with the China virus? No, Chris, they're in lockstep. Um, you will not see them speak out against each other. We, of course, with the exception of Henry Cuellar, as you mentioned, the Democrats have fallen behind these far left radical policies. Uh, and you do not hear them uh, speaking out if they do. Uh, there are reper repercussions uh, on them. You know, everyone keeps telling me about all these so-called blue dog Democrats, all these moderates. They don't exist. I'm hearing in the halls of Congress, literally as I speak, they're nowhere to be found. It's, they're, they're extinct. They're all socially radical, and they support these open border policies that are endangering American citizens. Well, last thing, Florida Congressman Mike Waltz is, is demanding the International Olympic Committee move the Beijing Olympics because China is run by a bunch of, as you know, human rights abusers and slavers. How many Democrats do you know that are supporting this initiative? I, none, none. In fact, I spoke on the House floor about that. Michael Waltz and I had that bill together. We not only want a, I personally would like to see an entire boycott Michael Waltz was even willing to say, let's just have a, a diplomatic boycott just to try to get negotiations. The Democrats are afraid to call out China and hold them accountable. Here's the problem, Chris. If the Chinese Communist Party is allowed to host these games, they will get this international cachet of respect. Historically, countries that have held the Olympic Games in these situations have invaded other countries. Case in point, Germany invaded Czechoslovakia after their Olympics. The Russians did this twice. They invaded Afghanistan and they invaded Georgia, if you remember. We don't want to let the Chinese get all this uh, prestige and then, and then try to invade Taiwan. Additionally, we don't want to reward them for their atrocious human rights violations, forced organ harvesting, modern day concentration camps with the Uyghurs, uh, horrible, atrocious stuff going on in China. But the Democrats will not hold China accountable. You know, I often wonder what the Chinese Communist Party has on the Democrats. It's got to be something, because none of them will speak out against the Chinese Communist Party. Well, they, they all think alike. They all have similar ideology, and they all have similar values. Uh, Congressman, first off, forgive me for not remembering your legal background. You have my sincere it's apologies. Good, and you also, have my, you also have my sincerest thanks for, for expertise. You always take the tough questions here on The Chris Salcedo Show, and we really appreciate it.